Activision devs do not play their own game. It's not your dad. Your dad doesn't support you. You should know. You worked at a coffee shop, you stupid bitch. My name is Casey and absolutely not fucking Tanner because my parents don't hate me that much. Hey, did they have just eight patches lined up, but they just didn't release them because they were on break? No, you moron kids. Then we'll of course get into it. Change your fucking name and get scammed. He's not. He's feeling under the I weather. I probably won't say another word until stay humble. So have a good pod, Raz. I'll Got be it. here listening. Got it. We are live. Welcome. How's the, dude, how's the new intro without the little bait beforehand? I'm, I'm still very proud of that bait, by the way, that I, of course, whipped up, uh, just whipped that sucker up prior to award-winning episode 201 of the broadcast. How's the, how's the new intro? How are you liking it, Tanner, now that it's unsolved? Good. I think you need to let the song finish though and give it a few seconds before you start talking i think we need because that that music fades out for what 10 12 seconds or so oh well, uh, too long yeah after it's okay after the words finish in the song i think we need to give it like a three or four seconds you just the word is done and you're talking already so let's let's settle that down next episode okay. we'll, we'll, we'll work on it. it's something you need to work on <laughs> Okay, well, yeah, so we're we'll figure that, that out. Maybe do some practice. I don't know. Thanks for that feedback on that. Uh, yeah. Welcome to the show. So today's episode 202. My name is Casey, and also known as Razanon, and I'm joined by Tanner. Uh, reminder, <laughs> and especially today, this is true. We have a lot of announcements before the program today. We have a lot of fun and exciting things to talk about. Um, in fact, this afternoon, this gorgeous Californian afternoon. Uh, imagine living somewhere else. But before we do, again, we have a ton of announcements. So if you only, if you're new, uh, we have timestamps where you can just skip all the announcements if you want. You shouldn't, but you could. So if you don't want to listen to the very long list of announcements we have today, feel free to skip them. Uh, we again, ha we once again have timestamps in the show notes or the video description if you're watching on youtube now tanner how you doing bud how's Yo. life good yeah what's up yeah what's your up? room looks extra messy today what's going on there does it yeah seems the same i don't know whatever's going on with your futon there's a lot yeah your room should yeah. be clean like mine nah got it nope not interested okay. thanks though cool good talk all right. Well, welcome to the show. Uh, so again, today we have a lot to talk about. Uh, something, frankly, shocking to to me has happened uh, today. Oh, yeah. In fact, it is it was announced and then made live instantly, and we're gonna, of course, get into that. Um, but once again, first a couple of announcements. First of all, welcome to our new gold patrons. We got quite the list here, hot off the heels of our overhaul our two-year anniversary celebration um, and a lot of exciting things coming to the the Patreon uh, and some people are getting on board with that. So, Anx, A-N-X, change it, hate it, Jose R, Sean K, not a real last name, Robert D, and Tech Deku. Welcome to our new gold <laughs> patron. Let's absolutely fucking go, boys. Patreon.com slash the drop shot. Very kind of each and every one of you. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Enjoy those four bonus eps a month. Now, if you want six bonus episodes a month, you will be like Matt S. Or like Christopher, just Christopher, our new platinum patrons. Holy shit, man. They're not getting five bonus eps a month anymore. They're getting six, which is actually insane. Um, and I can't believe we're doing it. We're lunatics. All for the yeah. same price, by the way. We're lunatics, and Matt and Chris are capitalizing on our insanity. Welcome, boys. Much appreciated, our new Platinum patrons. Also, we got a new Damascus, Chad, who's getting not four... Not five, not even six, but seven. Holy shit. Bonus episodes a month now. And a lot of other goodies, by the way. Patreon.com slash adopt shot. The Mexican mogul, our new Damascus. <laughs> Absolute Chad. Welcome, buddy. Very much 
appreciate that. We've also got some frugal, wise, financially responsible, well, new patrons, a new annual gold patron gamer citizen. He's got like a Mario flower as his Patreon avatar, which I detest. Um, Does he? Yeah, it's very up upsetting. It's oh. unsettling, really. Uh, yeah. And the name's a little weird, too. Gamer Citizen, huh? Don't like it. He's a citizen of the gaming world, dude. What's wrong with that? And we'll edit that out. But Gamer Citizen, welcome to the Patreon, our new annual gold patron. We've also got, we've also, we's have also got two new annual Damascus Kings, George B., and only slightly bad boys welcome aboard this the scam train choo choo motherfuckers welcome that's a lot of new patrons we love and appreciate all of you very kind of you absolute kings and we hope you enjoy and we've got a lot of fun and exciting patreon content coming up so the patreon overhaul was announced in our last episode. Uh, the website at patreon.com slash the dropshot, of course, has been updated to reflect these changes accurately. So if you wanted to know precisely how the overhaul works, if you've forgotten everything we said, go to the website and it lists everything, every benefit we offer now. It is now reflective of the overhaul. So everything that's on the Patreon as of now is accurate and will again reflect what you're going to get each month and that starts this month for the month of february uh now also i updated the discord a little bit the patreon lounge uh to reflect these changes as well <clears throat> but full details are only going to be found on patreon.com slash the drop shot uh and as a reminder to those of you who are new patrons or maybe you've been here a while we use discord a lot to coordinate activities, including the tournament, uh, the monthly hangouts we're going to be doing, uh, etc. So join the fucking Discord and link your Patreon account so that you get access to all the channels that you uh, deserve to have access to. There is a channel called New Patron Onboarding in our Discord that will show you with pictures a step-by-step -step guide on how to link your Patreon and Discord accounts so that you'll automatically unlock everything you should have in our Discord. Um, it's very easy. It should take you no longer than one minute max. Uh, it's incredibly simple. You people, which is unsurprising because you listen to this podcast, still manage to struggle with it. That's why I've given you a picture book guide <laughs> in Discord on how to do it. I mean, it couldn't yeah. be simpler. An I have pictures. Picture book. Literal pictures. So uh, join the fucking Discord. Uh, especially if you are new to the Patreon, it is uh, important for you guys. So, and thank you all again for joining the Patreon. We hope you appreciate all the new offerings we have available. Now, our first Damascus Patreon hangout, we move these from weekly to monthly. And as we said uh, last episode, they are not going to be at the same time every month like we had once done. We used to do Fridays last Friday of the month at 7 p.m. Pacific time. We're not doing that anymore. We are instead going to be changing these things around uh, on a month-to-month -month basis. So it's still going to be one per month. We're going to let you guys know at least, you know, a couple days in advance, uh, the day, the time, and uh, the itinerary. Um, and that will be the case this month obviously as well this is going to be the first month where we're doing all seven bonus episodes so this might get a little squirrely uh but we're gonna we're gonna fulfill our obligations we'll put it that yeah. way so will the last step come out on february 28th at 11 58 p.m it's possible it, it probably is absolutely will. possible yeah and, and we're gonna do that we're gonna schedule one to come out the last minute figure it out maybe just to make a point we'll do that so yeah because tanner has i don't know another jeep trip to zion national park this month or something we're thinking something, yeah. of almost certainly in fact we're going to be doing our first damascus monthly scheduled 
agenda I don't think that's a word. It might be. Uh, Damascus Patreon Hangout. Probably this week. This week. Probably Friday or Saturday. We will probably have more details on Monday. Uh, so if you Damascus patrons would like to do anything in particular, let us know in Discord as soon as possible. I don't know what exactly we are going to be doing, um, and I don't know what day or what time, but uh, maybe you guys have some ideas on any of that or on what we want to do or what we should do. Tanner, do you have any ideas or reflections on this topic? Yeah, I don't know what we should do either. I'm not I'm not really sure. Uh, maybe we'll do a meet and greet. Maybe a little what do they call it at like uh when you go to like a little like a little cocktail party, a little meet and greet. Maybe we'll have a cocktail party actually. We'll hang out, people can get to know each other. We'll we have to say our deepest, darkest like secret. Breaker? Yeah, a little icebreaker maybe. Uh -huh. We did do like a, and we did that the first time. Yeah, we did do an icebreaker little thing at our very first hangout. I don't remember what it was. Was it two truths and a lie? It was two truths and a lie. People still talk about that to this day. It was pretty fun. It's still being discussed. It was pretty fun. The problem with it is it took way longer than I thought it would. It was like an hour, and there were not that many people there. So I don't well, know if we'll all, do that again. Then that's all we have to plan. <laughs> I mean, yeah, then that's, that's it. That's all yeah. we're doing. I don't know. Yeah, maybe we'll have a little cocktail party to warm. Everyone has to have a drink. Uh, you have to be naked and you have to have your webcam on. And you have to show us your cocks, yeah. Uh, obviously. So, Females welcome, of course, yeah. Yeah. Well, if they have cocks. Um, <laughs> okay. So that's a joke. Uh, yeah. So, well, I don't know. We'll see what we're going to do. But we'll uh, we'll let you guys know. We'll keep you guys updated. And... Details of the Patreon Hangouts, the Damascus Hangouts, are going to be posted in Discord. We're not going to post that stuff on Twitter, because it's not for everyone. It's not for public consumption. It's for kings only. So, once again, I, I will reiterate. Join the Discord and link your account, because otherwise you won't be able to get all those details. You won't be able to participate in the Hangouts. Um, but it's easy to do, and you should be able to do it in, again, 30 seconds. So... Yeah, we'll let you guys know on that. Um, Tanner, what is this next announcement? Uh, oh, again, merch is live. Thedropshot.com slash store slash shop store. slash something. Figure it out. It's on the Just website. Thedropshot.com. Drop press on the store. Buy button, some yeah. merch. Uh, if you purchase it within the next few days, it's going to start. I'm going to start packaging them and shipping them out this weekend slash early next week. Uh, so I was kind of just waiting until we got as many orders in as possible. And then those will start going out. Uh, whiskey glasses are officially out of stock. We told you guys they're not ever coming back. They're gone. You guys missed your chance. They were on sale for episode uh, 201, and now they're fucking gone. Uh, and we have six coffee mugs left as well. Again, discounted. I think they're $9.99. It's an absolute steal. You're probably going to pay more in shipping, steal. actually, yeah. which is out of our control. You're ripping the us United off. States government. Um, so, yeah, get those. Only six left. Those will never come back again, that type. And, uh, yeah, get a new hoodie while you're at it. Um, so you guys that ordered on ep 201 get fucked. Your order won't be shipping out until early next week. Don't care. Seven days. I don't care. Yeah. You know, well, I mean, get fucked. Yeah. So got, this is the guy, by the way, who wanted to form a union for things like this so that he can't get punished for just wanton insubordination of this type. I, if I were the one shipping, they would have all, you guys would have them already. Right. But you know, it's out of my control. I can't do it. The warehouse is unfortunately under his his control. So, I guess you'll get it when you get it. Sorry, guys, not my fault though. Man of the people, by the way. Uh, do we have any T-shirts left? Uh, I can check right now. We only had two sizes left, anyways. I think one of those sold out, didn't they? Uh, I can check right, absolutely right now. Let's see. Let's go to products. Let's go to T-shirts. Let's go to variations. Let's go to nope. That's the wrong button. Uh, that button maybe. There we go. Okay. Um. Oh, we only have large left. So apparently, people just uh, what I thought was the most common T-shirt size in the world. Apparently, you guys don't wear that size. All we have left is large T-shirts, and there's still 15 of them. Jesus, really. We had like 40 of them to start with. We so you guys are either larges, you yeah. guys either weigh too much or you weigh too little. So weigh a different weight <laughs> so that you can wear a large t-shirt and yeah. order one cuz they're on sale for 14.99. Yeah. Even if it doesn't fit you, I don't care, just order one. 
get bigger or smaller so that you fit into a large and get the ideal yeah. size to wear a large and then order it yes it is that simple yeah so anyway yeah uh get some merch yeah so our our last merch drop our first merch drop the glasses mugs well the mugs and the t-shirt and the large t-shirts <laughs> Those are on sale for the month of February. They'll go back to their original price in March. So if you want them, get them now. Uh, and uh, yeah, we still got plenty of hoodies. So thedropshot.com, you'll figure it out. Uh, also, tournament signups are live. As a reminder, you can type exclamation tournament, I think, in chat right now to uh, see the rules and the signups for that. We've already had five teams sign up, four of whom have actually been entered because one team of absolute fucking dumb shits signed up with two people. So that sign up just doesn't count, right? They're not signed up. It is three. They they just did the form wrong. I double checked. I looked under a different tab. There is three of them. I think it was Griff. So Griff, it's your fault. You signed up the wrong way, but you're it's fine. We'll We'll let you slide. I guess we'll let him slide. Uh, you're an if, idiot, but we'll let it slide. If it were up to me, I wouldn't let you slide, but you're lucky, Goat. This is why Goat's in charge. Um, so, yeah, we have five teams signed up out of a maximum of... How many teams is it? Oh, boy. 74? I don't know, you read your little sheet. 74. Uh, so, there's still no. a lot. No. Wait. A maximum of oh, yeah, 49 40, teams. 49. Excuse me. Yeah, 49. I thought I did duos for some reason. Yeah, so 49 team slots total available. Uh, five have signed up. And it has been yeah. two days. So The um, the the magic number we want to hit is 26 because that'll put us in regular BR. So that's yes. what we want to do. And I don't want us I don't want to be associated with a mini Royale tournament ever. So if we are forced yeah. to do that, we're going to do it. But we need at least 26 teams to sign up, bare minimum. Ideally, yeah. 49. Uh, so let's get on that quickly. And the deadline is the deadline. You guys can see the document there as well. Now, if you're not here live and you want to enter, or you want more details, once again, in the Discord, there's a tournament resources section. The first link, rules and signups. There's one post in Discord. It has a link to the current tournaments, rules, and sign-up sheet. So go check that out. You can get the rules. You can get the sign-up, obviously. And then you can um, sign up from there. Uh, and then once the teams are filled, that's it. We're not doing a second lobby. We can't accommodate more teams than 49. We won't. So sign up before slots run out. I wouldn't be surprised if they did. I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't, but I wouldn't be surprised if they did. So better yeah. safe than sorry, of course. Yeah. Um, also, we do have four sponsorship slots left. So again, as a reminder, if you want to sponsor the tournament, just like last time, we will have your organization or stream or whatever you fucking want a uh, little logo We'll have a little tagline if you want, the name of your business, Borpa Business, and then we're going to do like an ad read for you. So like this tournament is sponsored by, uh, you know, Dave's Dick Dildo Delivery. And then we'll say like delivering dicks daily. And then we'll have a logo of a dick well, or we, something. Let's be clear. We're not doing any of that. But Well, if that's your business and you pay 100 United States dollars to sponsor the tournament, then it is. And as another reminder, all of the tournament proceeds, all $600 is going directly to the prize pool. And then 100 is going to go to dough. So it's all to fuel the tournament. That's the only thing we're taking out of that. So we have four yeah. slots left. Once those are done, we're not accepting more than six. And if we don't get enough, then the prize pool shrinks. And it's out of our control. It's that simple. Yeah. So sponsor the goddamn tournament. We have four slots left. Thank you to the two of you who have done it so far. We'll get more into that as we get closer to the tournament. Um, keep that in mind. Uh, tomorrow, Rebirth gameplay stream. Uh, we're probably going to do a mix of Rebirth Island and regular BR. I think we'll see how much fun we're having on rebirth though, but we're going to start with rebirth. It'll either function as sort of a warm up or 
it'll just be fun enough where we keep doing that for the whole broadcast. Oh, we won't be streaming Rebirth for the whole thing. I can promise you that. Yeah. Got it. I'll uh, get slide canceled twice to FBG years, and that'll be it for Rebirth. Got it. So, yeah. So part of the reason we're doing Rebirth gameplay is because it sounds fun. We haven't done it in quite a while. And since we have a lot of bonus episodes to talk about and a lot of, or to talk on for the Patreon at patreon.com slash the drop shot, and a lot of you guys uh, play Rebirth a lot, we figured it would be good to get reacquainted with Rebirth Island, do another ep on it for the Patreon. Um, and this is one of those things that I think we will be doing more of on the Patreon going forward is bonus episodes related to things like that. Uh, like a rebirth brainstorm on um, you yeah, know, we on haven't the played Patreon it every month. We haven't played we, it in quite a while. Yeah, we, we haven't played it since uh, since Vanguard, so we haven't tried like all the new guns on it, perks, things like that. So it could be interesting, even you know, even with the tacticals and all that changing. So it'll be very different. Yes, indeed it will, and I'm very very excited to uh, to give it a try because I'm also gonna try some new perks i think too or different perks rather like i kind of want to try tempered and i don't know i know we talked about that once i don't know if i tried it though but uh, yeah we're gonna do a lot of experimenting and we'll uh we'll get back to you guys with that but uh we also have a gameplay breakdown coming out shortly uh and then we have two more in the queue so if you submitted a gameplay breakdown that we're still going to be doing those we're still going to be honoring those you just can't submit a new one because we're not going to be accepting them any longer. And then last note here, the audio on the last episode. So I, as normal, rendered a good high quality MP3 file of our four hour and 20 minute or something. Or 20. Two year celebration episode. Uh, and the website that we upload to was just not having it. I kept getting a different error every time. I looked it up. I couldn't figure out what was wrong. or the, it, I was never getting the same error twice, but it was not working. And I figured this is probably just because the file size is too big. So I compressed the audio, tried it again, worked first try. So something with how big the file size was in original quality, I just couldn't upload it to apps. Sorry. So I compressed it. Turns out I compressed it too much because some of you guys are complaining about the audio from the last episode. I'm sorry. It's out of my control. If this was, you know, a year ago, I would just delete it off the apps, compress it a little less, and then re-upload it. But we can't do that now for Borpa business reasons. I, I'm not rocking that boat. I don't know if I can. We're not going to do it. So if you want to listen to episode 201 in its original high quality audio in its entirety go to the youtube the youtube audio is unmolested it is perfectly high quality just like every other episode we do and it sounds really good on youtube i had no problems there so if you wanted to listen in normal quality you could do it on youtube that's the best quality you're going to get in fact unfortunately but going forward, the audio quality won't be as bad as episode 201. Even if we have a four-hour episode, I'll compress it less next time. I didn't know that it was going to sound like it did. It's still listenable, in my opinion, but some people have more sensitive little ears than other people do. So if you didn't notice anything good, I'm glad. Uh, some of you were mauling about it. If, if you were so mad you couldn't finish the episode, you can listen on YouTube. The audio, audio quality is excellent there. Better than it yeah, was on think, Twitch and anywhere else. So, if you're listening just on like speakers, you probably can't tell a difference. Even with just a headset, probably can't tell a difference. But like, if you have like in-ear little buds, I think that's where you're really going to be able to tell because it sounds things sound way like you can noticeably tell if something's slightly off with those. And I even I noticed that I'm like, are these people serious? And then I listened to it, and 30 seconds in, I'm like, oh yeah, shit, yeah, this is noticeably worse than the other ones. But it's nothing we could do. Watch on YouTube and sub on YouTube, pussies. And it is that simple. So yeah. yeah. So other than that, Tanner, that's it for me. Any other announcements nope. from you if you're listening to the general news? We should have had him make this jingle like three minutes long so that you can go get your little poops out of the way during this. My little poops. Little out of my little poops. butt. 
Yeah, I could. Uh, only slightly bad. With the resub, 16 months. Let's absolutely fucking go. Thank you, buddy. Welcome back. I love you and appreciate you, King. And Aussie boy with the tier two. 19 months total and in a row. That's how a king does it. Aussie boy. Razin OK. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate you, brother. Very kind to of you both. All right, boys and girls, welcome to the show. A lot, not a lot to talk about, but an unamount to talk about and big shit to talk about. So this is going to be kind of, you know, it's been weird because with this week now, this is like three weeks in a row, Tanner, where there hasn't been that much on the table, but the things on the table have been just massive. Isn't it strange three weeks in a row? What are your thoughts on that? Three weeks in a row. That's weird. It's like, it's like nothing was going to get better in January. Who would have thought? This is <laughs> well, crazy, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, some things did get better, sort of. We'll get into it. So first, we're going to start yeah. playlist updates here. Um, this is for Warzen uh, for the week of the 3rd of February, which is where we are now. Thunder Trios, all BR modes, Rebirth Resurgence Trios quads, Mini Royale duos on Rebirth Island. We haven't seen Mini Royale on Rebirth or anywhere for that matter for quite a while. That's kind of interesting. I always kind of liked yeah, Mini remember. Royale on Rebirth. Ugh, I thought it was horrible. I thought it was kind of novel. So um, that's going to be coming back. Um, what? Yeah, yeah, no, I was just thinking, it's, I feel like it's probably been in Caldera since uh or since the transition we just haven't paid attention maybe maybe this is the first time it came back i don't know well it's not in caldera but, it's on rebirth island well that's what i mean since the caldera update though i feel like it's probably been oh. in on rebirth we just haven't paid attention to it because we haven't been playing rebirth i don't know though it, i mean mini royale on rebirth is the worst thing in the video game so you're actually insane i'd rather play plunder <laughs> that so is, got it well you're insane but anyways week of february 10th next week vanguard resurgence quads BR buybacks, solos, duos, trios, and quads. Wow. That Huge. plus the Lodi reversion, which we're of course going to get into. You know, Activision's like, guys, I know you're all streaming Apex now. Please come back. Yeah. Buybacks, Bandwave, and Lodi reversion? Oopsie. Holy shit. Whoopsie poopsie, man. Battle Royale buybacks. How do you think that would play in Caldera? Are you excited? Oh, I'm very excited. Buybacks is so much fun. Yeah. Um, I always kind of thought that like buyback quads should just be in the game permanently, but you know, they have other shit game modes they want to mix in for some reason. But buybacks is so much damn fun. So I'm excited that that's all there's going to be uh, for one whole week. That's that's exciting. Um and uh, another thing that we're seeing is they've been both of these weeks. They're keeping trios and quads resurgence on rebirth, whereas they've been often alternating them between trios and then it goes to quads and then it goes to duos. But now maybe they're going to start keeping trios and quads in there because those are the two most popular by far. So that would be nice if they do just permanently stay. We'll see. That is good. But, to know. Um, That's a good trend. You noticed. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. I agree. I do hope they keep it that way. Uh, so yeah. for those of you who don't know what Battle Royale buybacks means or remember, because they used to call it stimulus. It's basically regular BR, except there's no gulag. If you have four thousand five hundred dollars on your person when you die, you automatically and instantly come back. You, your teammate doesn't even have to go to a buy station to buy you. You just come back automatically. And then there still is a time whenever the normal gulag would close at that time, you no longer respawn, even if you have enough money. But that's what that's what buybacks is. Uh, so you can imagine it's a lot faster pace. There are a lot more kills to be had because people are coming back a lot more quickly. So um, a lot of people really like that mode and that that's going to be a lot of fun. So those are the playlist updates. Now let's get into patch notes changes already in effect. First, on Vanguard, we had a January 31st update. Uh, some stability fixes for Xbox. Um, some bug fixes for Xbox. Uh, let's see. And some other campaign bug fixes. So basically, no update. <laughs> They're, still <laughs> so They're still fixing the campaign? 
<laughs> yeah. Hey, if someone hasn't played the campaign yet, they're not going to play it, Sledgehammer. Yep. Yeah. And I stopped <laughs> playing your campaign, Sledgehammer, because of your dog shit plane mission. So thanks for that. I would have kept playing it, but I didn't. Fuck that. So anyways, there's also an update today, in fact, which I added to the notes uh, for Vanguard. Weapons. Panzer right. Faust. Ooh. I hope this says what I what it's got, what I wanted to say. Panzer Faust. Uh, cool. Never mind. Panzer Faust has been modified to be more effective against spy planes and counter spy planes. So I'm assuming what that means is that you don't have to shoot it with a gun first to actually kill it. In other words, a Panzerfaust rocket, if it hits a spy plane or counter spy plane, it'll yeah. probably blow up a full health spy plane on its own with one rocket, which is good. So I'll take that. Uh, splash damage kills from the Panzerfaust launcher will now count towards long shots. I don't know what this means. Because I think before, did it still have to be... I think it was... It only had to be direct impact before. That but I thought so they already hard. fixed that in one of the updates like a week or two ago. I'm not sure, though. I almost wonder if you shoot someone, they take splash damage, then you pull out your gun real quick and get a long shot if that'll count for it or not. Yeah, or if it means like elims will count toward long shots splash damage kills it says splash damage actual kills though so it probably is you still have to get the kill but it just doesn't have to be a direct impact i don't know it's very weird yeah, yeah i don't know either but either way whatever if you make it easier to get long shots that's good so i'll take it um let's see incendiary grenade smoke has been reduced okay that's good and then in search and destroy in private matches, um, there's a silent plant option, and it now works in private matches. Why the fuck would anyone want that, huh? It's something to do with CDL. The CDL kids were talking about it on Twitter. I think that's the only reason they, they put this in there, because there was something going on, and then one of the, the CDL players was like, yo, Sledgehammer, what's going on with this, or whatever. And then they like tweeted at him, they're like, thanks, we're looking into this. So, I, it, yeah. It's just for CDL. Got it. Yeah, so it doesn't matter. So that's it for doesn't Vanguard. Matter, not yeah. much. A lot of just whatever. It's it's fucking crazy to me that we're now we're now basically three full months almost to the day since Van. We're a quarter no, I th of the way through. And they're still fixing camo challenges. I know. Isn't that fucking nuts, man? I know. Yeah. Like what? God, they've been so slow with the updates post launch. I it's like it's like they just blew their whole load on the launch and then they were just I don't know, fired half of their staff or something cuz they didn't think they'd need them and now there's all this shit wrong. It's it's so weird. I can't think of another COD game that's taken this long to fix all of the camo challenges and they still aren't done fixing them. It's weird. It is weird. Yeah. And like, each update is just so small. Like there's yeah. nothing here. I know. It's like seriously, like all of those, all of these camo challenges. I genuinely expected them to be fixed within the first week or two of the game, and now it's three months later, and they're still making changes. That's yeah. It's yeah. I feel for people who really want atomic, and their STG kills simply don't count, so they just can't do it. Those I think finally work for everyone. That would be good, but still, I agree. It's insane. I don't know, man. What, hopefully, season two goes bonkers. Oh, there's another. There's another new bug that lag and snobber saying. Well, gun doesn't count towards atomic like you can for other weapon categories. So that's probably a bug. Almost certainly. Yeah, like, certainly. Because like you can do the 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 coop uh, instead of the itra burst and still get atomic, and it's not doing that for the well gun. So yeah, it's it, it's a whatever's going on over there. It's a disaster. I think it's always going to be buggy because if it's been three months, because if they add a new gun like the well gun, which was bugged in other ways, too, it was like if you got long shot, if you got your long shot camo with the well gun, you got every other camo like you got it gold. So it's like a buggy disaster. And then it also doesn't count toward SMG like platinum or diamond rather. If that is happening to new guns they're adding i don't think the camos are ever going to not be a buggy mess in vanguard if yeah. they still are three months later and new guns they add are buggy too i think it's just fucked i don't know 
it's yeah. uh it's sad to see but well oops but whatever yeah, on to more fun right. and exciting news there was a Warzone patch today, the 3rd of February. Uh, so for the fourth time, bug fixes. Fixed collision issues with various elements across Caldera, allowing players, they use the exact same words, to exploit pink sheet through them. So I'll say it for the fourth time now. We'll see. They're working on it, which continues to be fine, but let's figure it out. And I would expect you to still be able to die through... Uh, the map at uh, at airport. What's it called? It's not airfield. What's it called? Air, Air station. Uh, airfield, isn't it? It doesn't matter. It's the airport. Whatever the place with the planes. Yeah. Um. So cool. Fixed an issue causing players to freeze on the tier skip redemption screen. Cool. And then one gameplay change. That's it. One note here. And, you know, it's kind of pathetic, because Warzone, I mean, come on, it's a big game. You make one change with a patch. Are you fucking serious? But let's see. Maybe it's a big change. Let's take a let's take a little peek here. Let's take a peek. Let's do a little reading. Loadout drops are now available, holy shit, for purchase via buy stations at any time during a game. <laughs> this only applies to Battle Royale. Vanguard Royale rule sets differ. So I'm assuming Vanguard's going to still have the restriction for the seven minutes. But regular BR, you can buy a loadout at any time, just like you could on Verdansk. Wow. So I'm going to start by saying this. I'm shocked. Tanner yes. and I are on record saying we not we did not believe this would ever happen. We thought, if anything, the timer would be brought back, not completely reverted. However... I think probably what happened is many, many big streamers stopped streaming Warzone. So the player count was down tremendous. And they said, you know what? Even if we think this will hurt casuals in the long run, we are bleeding too many players. So we're going to appease streamers so that streamers start streaming our game again. So that their fans start playing Warzone again and buying our bundles. Even yeah. if this isn't in the best interest, as we see it, of the casuals. And therefore, the loadout f uh, drop change has been completely reverted. Wow. What are your thoughts, Tanner? Did you believe you we would ever see the day? No, I didn't think we would ever see the day. Uh, of course, one thing they didn't put in the patch notes is that money was nerfed. A considerable amount oh that's but great. uh from what people have been saying it's still like you can still get your load out quick which is yeah that's that's fine because the money did need to be nerfed but it's like let's let's put that in the patch notes rather than someone uh their game freezing on the tier skip redemption screen i mean i, you I don't agree. even need to put that in there so that was the balance that needed to happen though and that's kind of what we talked about so if if you need to or we had said if we can buy a loadout right away with the amount of money in the game, make it 15 or 20,000. We can come up with that and that's fine. So they kind of just did a little bit different. They'd lower the amount of money and now it's still $10,000 and you can buy it whenever. So I think this is going to change Caldera completely. I think people are going to start having different opinions on it. Uh, the boys were already saying that it plays so well. It's so much better now. It's a lot of fun. So I'm very excited to get back into this. Yeah, never thought we'd see a full revert ever absolutely shocked that activision would do something like that like usually something that's like a full revert on a major change they made you see that happening on like smaller dev studios because they they have a lot to lose and they want to retain their player base but for a big studio like activision usually they just absolutely ignore what everyone wants yeah, they, yeah. um but you know raven did say we've been following feedback closely since the launch and you know it's pretty what pretty obvious that the overwhelming majority of people wanted this reverted and so they did it uh there are still rumors that a vanguard loadout change is coming not a revert but with season two you'll be able to buy it earlier like in in half the amount of time i don't know though they didn't say that today and you think if they were going to do that it happened at the same time as this one well maybe not because is vanguard royale even in right now i think it's just quads i don't know oh yeah. it's not even in so it doesn't matter yeah 
it's not in for the next two weeks. Oh, wow. So that yeah, not... that may actually line up. Maybe they'll do some tweaking on stuff like that. And then with season two, we'll get a change to that because there'd be no reason for them to announce it since it's not even the game right now. So that's probably what we're going to see, actually. We'll yeah. see a change to that. For sure. Um, but yeah, this is, this is huge. I'm very excited. Uh, another thing, honestly, uh, Black Helicopters, this change Black will probably help Vanguard sales because people know that leveling up their guns is a lot more important now like i'm already thinking like fuck man i wish i had my owen max instead of like level 40 that it is because now i can make a loadout with that use that right away rather than just use the the good ground loot one you know and make some changes to it so this will probably help stuff like that it'll probably help uh with the vanguard player count slightly as well because people will be leveling up more of their guns and stuff so that could be a that could be a small reason but i'm very excited to play this very excited to try it um just yeah didn't see this coming at all i love it uh, yeah i didn't see it coming either i absolutely saw a change coming because they were talking about it so first of all kudos to raven and honestly kudos to activision for allowing raven to do this yeah so we give credit where it's due and i don't give activision very much credit because it's very rarely due but in this case it is they allowed their development studios to listen to consumer feedback and they've implemented that feedback. I didn't think it was gonna happen. I'm glad it did. I'd rather we have this than the system where we have to wait for seven minutes. I still think there would have been merit to having it be like, you can't buy it for three minutes or something, but I'm totally happy with this. I think it's better yeah. than waiting seven minutes. I'm excited by this. Obviously a net gain um, for me. Uh, and this is gonna change a couple things pretty dramatically. Uh, the biggest change I see from this is that early game and where people drop in particular, let me phrase it, rephrase this, where people drop is going to change a lot now, and by extension, that's going to change how the early game of every match on Caldera now will play a lot. Yes. An absolute ton. So, for example, one of our favorite drop spots is like Fields slash the drop spot. I don't know if that's true anymore because I bet you there's a lot more money to be had at capital. For example, we never land capital ever. That's we, true. We never do it. But if you, if we know now that we can buy a loadout as soon as we get $10,000, then we're going to care lo a lot less about rotating out of a position and a lot more about where we can drop to get the most amount of money in the least amount of time possible. So I think even for us, this is going to change where we like to drop, where we are going to be dropping very often. And if it's if that's the case for us, it's going to be the case for a lot of people as well. I think um, this is going to really break the game wide open an early game is going to be a fuck of a lot different and yeah. i think it's going to be a lot hotter on drop now i, I agree. think people are going to be way less spread out now so it's going to make early game really exciting there's going to be a new superstar in other words where there wasn't yeah, one true. before you know what are your thoughts uh i'm very glad you brought this up because i was thinking about this this morning when i read the change and totally f forgot to uh write this down you're absolutely right i was i, I was thinking peak is probably going to be hotter than ever peak is going to be a fucking blast because already quite a bit of people landed there but then it was just that weird that lull you know if you land peak you're pr if you're playing quads there's probably going to be four other teams there it's going to be an insane battle and there's a guaranteed buy station at peak either down in the cave or up top every single time as far as i know uh and you know you can get that shit right away oh it's going to be fun dude you're you're absolutely right Th this is going to make the drops um a lot hotter yeah so i just i just can't wait for that i i didn't even think capital but that's a really good point too yeah i would love to start landing capital resort places like that that are kind of just barren early game right now there's like one team that will land docks? resort ton of buildings docks. ton of loot no one yeah. lands there that'll change what about head beachhead? get some head too i think yeah. that'll get i think beachhead's still gonna be, i think that will remain one of our favorite spots because there is a lot of money on that building we like and there's to always at. a chopper there yep. i feel like we buy we're gonna see people drop more on helicopters more than ever now too knowing that 
if you land and you win that that first battle off the rip and you have a buy station and you have a chopper that's going to be ideal for the uh for the sweats to land there so yeah it, it it'll be there will be some intense fighting i think in areas like that i'm very excited yeah i'm super excited too this is gonna i mean it's gonna play a lot different early game i don't know how that's going to impact mid game and late game fewer teams later in the game that's what i'm wondering that too is this going to kill off the lobbies faster i'm not sure i think in general it probably would i'm not sure though because it is still a new map so we're gonna have to see how this all plays out over the next couple of weeks but whatever the case may be i'm very excited for it and this is going to breathe some some new life and freshness into caldera right before season two which is going to be good so i'm very excited about this change very happy with it another thing that's going to change forever vanguard royale will never be popular again <laughs> yeah it's that simple uh, if if there's a loadout restriction in that mode but not in regular br no one will ever stream vanguard royale again just yep. in case you guys were wondering so if you enjoyed watching vanguard royale on twitch enjoy it well no it's over you'll never enjoy it again actually uh no one will ever stream vanguard royale so that that game mode will no longer be broadcast ever uh and very few people are going to play it now so yeah I'm, I, I don't care. I mean, I don't care at all. But uh, if you do like Vanguard Royale because you're annoyed at dying to old guns, sorry. But, I mean, most people are going to pick getting a Lodi instantly over not dying to an EM2 or a fucking, I don't know, HDR. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to be... Uh, I think when Season 2 comes out, we're going to be in a solid spot. I think, I think that'll be like the true fun beginning for caldera is uh is season two on valentine's day honestly because we're gonna have more uh weapon balancing by then we're gonna have some changes to the pois on the map there has been rumors to them adding another poi in in the center not there hasn't been a ton on that so we haven't really covered it we'll see um but uh but yeah i think uh i think we'll be in a solid spot at that point i'm, I'm very excited to get back into this yes just dive deep deep massive dive so next here we have a little a little blog post from Raven Software. This is at ravensoftware.com. This was made today. And I think we're going to read just most of this because this explains kind of their thought process for why they do things the way that they do. So we want to give our community insight on the design process for the playlist calendar in Warzone. We with over 20 unique modes, dog shit. We plan on we plan and discuss the playlist for each season. When we plan and discuss the playlist for each season, we have some key design values and principles that we follow. And we've been wondering this exact question, so I'm glad we're getting this blog post here. With more than 100 million Warzone players, we recognize that each player is motivated by different gameplay experiences. A player who loves Plunder may not necessarily like Rebirth Resurgence, but may like other shit. Um, they continue to make the same point. We look at all available data and sentiment to, cons to constantly monitor the success of each mode, so these motivations represent our guiding light each week to make sure that we cater to as many players as possible. No surprise there. If Warzone had nothing but BR and Plunder since launch, we wouldn't have expanded to, liver to deliver new experiences like Resurgence, Payload, Iron Trials, and more. We've seen that the rotation of modes keeps the game engaging and results in players experimenting with modes they haven't played before, as well as allowing our teams the freedom to find the next great Warzone experience. There remains a balance here, which we will go into more detail on now. Squad sizes. We know that players like to play with different squad sizes, whether that's solos, quads, or anywhere in between. This may be motivated by your own social circle, you guys have no friends and Raven's telling you that, or by a specific experience that you might be looking for. This is one of the most challenging aspects to design, for when respecting the above design values and keeping the pool healthy. So we historically have focused on a healthy rotation of squad sizes, but going forward, we will be delivering more stability and consistency, just like Tanner noticed. I like this. A few months ago, we shifted from sharing playlists on a weekly cadence to, announce, to announcing multiple weeks at a time. This was due to feedback from players and tournaments alike that you wanted more time to plan ahead. 
The team has endeavored to lock in the playlist and communicate it as early as possible to you, and we still have room to refine this process. We'll continue to balance timely communication while providing flexibility for pivots when necessary, unless we want to keep something a fun secret, of course. Okay. Um, with all that said, we wanted to conclude by giving an insight into the plans for the remainder of the season. Our philosophy here has been to give the players a best of season outro with more consistent squad size availability while still having a little fun with the bonus four day buybacks Royale event to end. That brings this brings oh. additional benefits in giving our teams time to focus on addressing other player feedback in Warzone that blah, blah, blah. Go ahead, Dan. Uh, no, I was just going to say that goes in with what I was just saying about buybacks, how they didn't mention the Vanguard Royale loadout change because it's not in for the next two weeks. So buybacks is basically only in for four days, not a full week. Then we'll get season two. And then I bet on the launch of season two, we get Vanguard Royale back in with a loadout change like what it, it's been rumored to have. And then also the other thing I didn't expect from this is this. Uh, I mean, all but confirms Iron Trials will be coming back. Granted that they brought it up so many times, I don't think True. they would bring up the game mode if it wasn't going to come back. I mean, that's been pretty obvious. I think people are just surprised it hasn't been in the game yet. So that pretty much confirms we will be seeing Iron Trial at some point. Maybe also with the launch of Season 2, actually. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, this is interesting. I like that they that they made this post. That's funny that they actually said this. <laughs> you motivated by your own social circle. That is basically saying how many friends you have to play. Actually, <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It, yeah, 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 actually. Yeah. Okay, losers. Yeah, got it. So yeah, that's cool. Uh, yeah, and Tanner noticed that right away, which is funny. Um, but yeah, that's that's good to see. I like the consistent squad kind of um, uh, formula they're going to have going forward. And yeah. by the way, all of that is kind of what we've been saying. They want to keep the pool healthy. That's why they're do that's why they're not just allowing everything. I feel like the pool could be healthy if you had all modes at all squad sizes at all times for whatever two modes you have, honestly, but they feel differently or whatever, but uh that's good to hear. And again, as as I say a lot, more than the change itself, the fact that they're continuing to tell us about why they made the change is the important thing because we we want to keep this uh, this trend going of Raven actually telling us beforehand what they're doing, what they're thinking of doing, why they're doing it. We're all very appreciative of that. This is more of that, so I'm very happy to see it. But no, nothing very surprising in that statement. But I'm glad they made it nonetheless. All right, now into news and upcoming changes. So this first thing I wanted to cover, I don't know if it's, you know, actually coming to Warzone or not, but Exclusive Ace did a YouTube video on it. That's how I even found out about it. And he references this guy, Hydra9114 uh, on Twitter. And this guy tweeted a tweet in Spanish. I'm fluent in Spanish, so I will tell you what it says. Ground war is coming <laughs> for the second time to Warzone slash Vanguard. Nope. nope. I don't know why he says Warzone, because ground war is not coming to Warzone. But according to this guy, and there's like a there's a little picture which I'm not showing, of like a map or some shit of it's a snow a, map. A snow map of a ground war map uh, on Vanguard. It's got a castle, a radar station, two little bases, a flak tower, uh, a supply depot, a rocket site, and terrain. La jiggle. Um, and so <laughs> terrain, by the way. So apparently, this leak was like convincing enough that exclusive ace made a whole video about it to reference it and again that's how i know that it exists so i i found that pretty interesting and i wanted to ask you tanner how likely do you think this is going to be to come to vanguard and how well would it play in vanguard in particular uh i think it's likely we've been hearing rumblings about that rumblings. for a while um yeah absolute little rumblings uh, I mean, it should come. Ground War is a fantastic game mode. 
it's if it comes to Vanguard, I will never play anything else, probably, but Ground War again. Uh, so long as they end up having more than one Ground War map. Uh, and we were not stuck with one map for like six months. But Ground War was by far my favorite game mode in Modern Warfare 2019. Um, I like that and Tens Dom, but they removed Tens Dom Fs early on. Tens Dom. F's in the chat for Tens Tens Dom. Um, so Ground War was fantastic. I absolutely love it. Love the size of the maps. Love how it plays. And it'd be a lot of fun. It would it would really make me want to play multiplayer a lot if this were in the game. I 100%. think. Hundred percent. Do you think it would be like different than like? M dub ground war like are there are there facts about vanguard that would make it a different experience than ground war and, and M dub because one thing i'm thinking for example the kill streaks in vanguard are just dog shit which would actually make ground war even better oh, good because point. you wouldn't be getting raped by well there is like a white foss equivalent so maybe that would be annoying but there's no vtol there's no chopper gunner there's no gunship so like there's no kill chain there's no kill chain either exactly so i think ground war at least on that front it would be a lot less plagued by dog shit kill streaks like ground war in mdub was you know what i'm saying yeah i think that would be really that's cool. a fantastic point yeah ground war in mdub there was pretty much a vtol up the entire game yeah, i mean you you had difficulty calling your vtol in because there was always one up on your team so that it actually probably would play better than this also snipers are a lot worse in this game than in m dub so i think you'll see less people sitting in the back just trying to snipe um th they certainly wouldn't have as much of an advantage as players who did that had in m dub 2019 so uh, i'm just trying to figure out if this is because castle i'm like is that like the castle map but then you look at the screenshots exactly and it looks like a new just looks like a castle it looks like a castle in like the swiss alps or something so yeah i'm not sure if this is made up of any multiplayer maps or not uh judging from that screenshot it really doesn't look like it but either way i think this is huge i've been waiting for ground war to come to vanguard uh it would yeah it would just be great all around the only thing that's weird to me is it's like we got Ground War almost immediately after launch of M-Dub. And then by the time we were three months into M-Dub, we had at least one other Ground War map. I think it came out with... I don't know. I don't remember. But it would be weird if Ground War came out with one map three months in. How many more maps would we see? Yeah, exactly. Like Season 2, we get one Ground War map. Season 3, we get another one? It's a Maybe. lot of map to make. Yeah. So maybe it's season four, and then the game yeah. ends with what three total ground war maps? Like that would be weird. It would be. It'd be kind of a waste, really. That's the only thing that makes me skeptical of this leak. I don't know. And then what about yeah. vehicles? Would there be any APCs or tanks? Any vehicles that can shoot little weapons? What do you think? Any planes? Ooh. Oh God! I hope none of that's in. I I hope it's infantry only. But who knows? I. I really don't know, yeah. It just infantry only ground war was the best part of ground war and MDM again. Yeah. And it wasn't in that often. It was called Boots on the Ground War, but it was so much fun. Yeah. Because you didn't have to deal with the shitty APCs that were annoying to kill because you're playing COD multiplayer. You don't want to run around with a rocket launcher the whole time, you know? You want to yeah. have a gun to kill people with. So Yeah, hundred percent. In the little mock up map on Twitter that this guy posted which we won't be showing again there aren't any vehicles at all on the map and sometimes there are vehicles and like map overheads they'll show like true you know tanks and shit I, I see literally no vehicles there would definitely be transportation vehicles at a minimum that's of course going to be the case but if there were also no tanks no apcs no planes that would be a lot of fun that would also make this better than m dub's ground war so hopefully yeah. that does come. Do you think it would come as soon as season two? Well, that's what the tweet says that you incorrectly yeah. read, even though there's a translate button. It says coming in season two. That's what so I, I will. I will guess it's there for the launch of season two. Yeah, that would be really fun. We would absolutely would play the fuck out of that. Yeah, yeah for sure. So cool. Yeah. Uh, all right, Tana, what's this next point here? Uh, before we get into this next one, there's some other stuff going on right now, it looks like. Um, 
So, according to Charlie Intel, Activision has officially confirmed Infinity Ward is developing COD 2022. I thought they already officially announced that, but I don't know. They said, quote, the team is working on the most ambitious plan in fr franchise history wow. with industry-leading innovation in a broad, broadly appealing franchise setting. Interesting. The most, what could be more ambitious Do you have a link? than designing Warzone? It's just a tweet. That's all it says. Yeah, I don't I know. Thank you, the tweet. Maybe that's the Tarkov thing that's been rumored to be oh, coming. Oh, maybe that's what they're right. referring to. And then when they're referring to a broadly appealing franchise setting, does that franchise setting? Do you think they're talking about like the actual setting of when and where the game takes place? Because it had been rumored that it was like drug cartel themed. Yeah. Uh huh. And I'd be totally fine with that. So uh, the most that's cool. Ambitious plan. Yeah, for something to be more ambitious than cross-platform, cross-generation, free-to-play battle royale, it would have to be incredibly ambitious. Mm. I mean, insanely ambitious. So maybe this is that like Tarkov-like game mode that has been rumored to be coming to Call of Duty in some capacity. If it's yeah. not that, I can't think of what else it would be. Like, I, I just, just have no idea. Yeah, I just can't think that something like that would actually appeal to Call of Duty players. I agree. Because, like, I get it that we have, like, the boomers who are, like, into, like, actual guns and war and shit. But I I don't know. It just doesn't seem to make sense in the Call of Duty franchise for anyone. Because the Sweat Lords probably won't like it. And then the boomers also probably won't like it because it'll be too casual focus then and then they still won't like it so i don't know if it's anything like an escape from tarkov mode that people keep talking about not sure how that'll play don't think it would be don't think it would play well but i don't know we also said that uh a br would be terrible and warzone would be dog shit so who knows at this point another thing too is like if they make that tarkov mode first of all it wouldn't be as hardcore as tarkov which we agree on there's no chance that would not appeal to Call of Duty players at all. No, they'd never do that. But yeah. even if you can lose gear when you die, if they make a Tarkov mode that's like free to play, can you imagine every other raid in Tarkov you die to a cheater? Like I wouldn't <laughs> play that game. Well, and this would definitely labs, yeah. have more cheaters than Tarkov if it's free to play, especially like I don't know, man. I don't know. We have Ricochet though. <laughs> yeah, well. Anyway, I don't know. Yeah. Very interesting, but uh, yeah, we'll see what the fuck that means, but I don't know. What, yeah. What's this uh, next little item here? Um, so there's a few more things here. Uh, Infinity Ward finally tweeted out something. A new generation of Call of Duty is coming. Stay frosty. That's what they just said. Got cool. it. Uh, what else here? Activision confirms Vanguard sales were lower compared to previous years. Got it. Shocking. Uh, and it looks like... It looks like there's an Activision meeting or something going on right now because Charlie Intel keeps tweeting out quotes, but none of them are that important, it looks like. Uh, yeah, whatever. Okay. Uh, next thing here we're going to get into. Um, apparently, there was a ban wave yesterday in Warzone. So I, gre uh, I guess uh, engine owning has uses telegram to communicate with the <laughs> with the cheaters of course of course they do that's hilarious so uh so yeah i guess there was a bunch of people on there messaging yesterday saying they use engine owning and they were perma banned they couldn't get back on the game blah blah sounds like they were hardware id banned so this hasn't been confirmed by anyone but it looks like there was a ban wave that went out yesterday uh but yeah, again raven hasn't confirmed it or anything and i was seeing a lot of things about cheaters yesterday i think it was I think it was Shaded Step said he had played for four hours that morning and, and, and he thinks there was a cheater in every single Holy game. Holy shit. So that is no different than when we didn't have an anti-cheat. So Yeah, it's not at know. all. Maybe instead of them thinking the anti-cheat would progress as time went on, the cheat software is actually just going to get better and Ricochet will never progress. True. And soon in a few months, it just actually won't do anything. That's Maybe actually just be at that possible, point. sadly. So. Yeah, so that's not great, but uh, glad we got a ban wave at least. Yeah, a ban wave, like. especially right now, is the perfect time because of the Lodi reversion, too. They just want to make that as good as possible for all these streamers, entice them back in. Yeah, exactly. I guess, but yeah. 
But yeah, uh, okay, next year. So last week we had talked a little bit about some Warzone 2 stuff. Tom Henderson had said some things like Warzone 2 is literally that. It's the next generation only version of Warzone and PC only version. So a few hours after that pod, he tweeted out a bunch more uh, about it. So here's what I've heard on Warzone 2. It's Infinity Ward's Warzone map that's set to be a clean slate for Warzone and was scheduled to release in holiday 2022. Clean slate meaning starting again, scrapping everything like weapons, operators, blah blah. A new a new game. You won't be able to use Vanguard guns in this yep. generation. Mm -hmm. This map was last mentioned to release holiday of 2022, just six weeks ago, indicating things are being shaken up if this is the Warzone 2 that was being referenced in the Bloomberg report. Legacy Warzone will still remain, but Warzone 2 is coming. That is the only thing that surprises me that so is surprising but the reason is again is because warzone 2 is rumored to be uh next gen consoles only so people playing on their old xbox will no longer be able to play this new one I uh see. and of course pc so then uh warzone 2 was referenced briefly in a company email that raven sent out uh there's not much there it's just they they talked about the ever the, the ongoing expansion of warzone uh blah blah what else did they say i don't know why he put this in there actually there's nothing that came out of that so never mind forget i even said that yeah um but yeah from past r reports and speaking to journalists this move contradicts what we've heard previously about warzone being warzone but it's believed this move is to finally move over current gen hardware in the best way possible so yeah like what we always heard was warzone was going to be just one thing ever changing but it's obviously it's it's obvious that they can't go eight years on the same exact Warzone client. At some point, something has to progress, of course, exactly. and this is it. Yeah. Uh, so this is that three year life cycle they're hitting, where it's going to progress and change. Going to get a new client. It's going to be a new everything. Now we just the the big question is if this will be based on Infinity Wars, Modern Warfare titles, movement, and all of that. If it'll play just like that, or if this will actually be a real standalone this time, and even have different mechanics, different movement, everything compared to the multiplayer title. That's what we don't know. If I had to guess, though, it will probably be just Warzone, uh, but with Infinity Wards, everything again, which is I fine because they do have good mechanics. Um, they their their weapons feel and look good. Everything about their game is good except for the little things they do to fuck it up yeah uh, so mm -hmm. that's totally fine with me it's i mean it's very obvious a development team like sledgehammer would never be able to handle anything like this so i think that's the right call uh treyarch stick to zombies infinity ward i think do a great job designing like the core aspects of the game but then they just fuck up little things and then make their games terrible so hopefully with raven actually taking control of warzone if this is based off the movement the feeling of this coming modern warfare title this year uh, i think this could be a solid warzone uh game the only thing also is the map how well they'll design a True. map it'll probably go back to something more similar to verdance definitely won't be a um you know an island like caldera so if it is based like in drug cartel, that could be cool. Maybe like a South American themed map. So some buildings, maybe some, you know, some deep, thick rainforest, some shit like that. Maybe some playable geckos. Maybe we'll finally get uh, animals in the game yeah. that can be killed and they yep. drop loot. That'd be fun. That would be fucking sick. Yeah. Get a oh, little, yeah. little gecko. Poison, I would guess Warzone 2 doesn't katana. come this year, by the way. I think, I think multiplayer will release this year and we'll probably get Warzone 2 early next year i would imagine or maybe not to like march or something yeah it was weird that tom I henderson doubt it's coming out this year i agree it's weird that tom henderson is surprised it's not coming in holiday 22 it's like if it's going to be based on mw2 22222 then it would be coming out early 2023 i don't know why he thought it would coincide with the launch of the the game itself so I'm, that's not surprising to me yeah, this all makes sense to me. All of this is exactly as we had kind of been talking about when we last talked about the the leak of Warzone 2. Um, and even further back, what we predicted before any leaks, what Warzone 2 would be, when it would come out, what it would look like. I'm not surprised by any of this, other than the Legacy Warzone thing. However, Legacy Warzone remaining operational wouldn't have been surprising to me if I had just thought about it. Because when you think about it, of course they'll leave it in. 
This will allow last gen consoles to keep playing. It will give them last gen console customer base that they can continue to sell bundles to. Uh, it'll keep people happy who said, oh, but I bought this weapon blueprint and now I can't use it anymore. I got scammed. They can just say, no, you can still use it. It's just on an old game we're barely going to update ever again. Yeah. So I'm not surprised Legacy Warzone is going to remain. And obviously, and honestly, it won't really change shit about how Warzone 2 is operated or updated or anything like that. We're still going to see um, plenty of attention paid to Warzone 2, especially in its first six months or whatever. But yeah, yeah I, I don't know. I, I find none of this surprising. I'm very excited. I agree with you. It will almost certainly be based off of the MW2 client that we will be getting, including movement, animations, UI, yeah. uh, mechanics, perks. Graphics, all of it, yeah. Graphics, all of it, yeah, uh, 100%. Which will be good. Hopefully it is more optimized <laughs> than the current Warzone disaster app is. Hopefully it will recognize that graphical processing units exist and then use them. That would be super cool too instead of using only my CPU to do all of the work. That would be fucking sick, but we'll see. Uh, but I'm very excited by this, and I'm surprised by virtually none of it. Um, and, yeah. And it looks good. Yeah. And I think we will see better performance uh, because, you know, it won't be it won't be the same game that someone on an old 10-year-old Xbox is playing. We can finally have our own game designed for new generation products. True. And optimized for newer generation yes. tech. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Very excited. Very good stuff. Yeah. What is... Oh, this is a fun and exciting little tweet here, Tanner. Okay. Uh, Everyone's favorite yeah. celebrity. Everyone's favorite celebrity. Uh, there are unconfirm unconfirmed reports. Actually, I think it's confirmed now uh, that Dwayne The Rock Johnson is in talks to be the lead in a Call of Duty movie. Yeah, I thought thought there ended up being more after this. I can't find anything else. Maybe not. But uh, but yeah. So that's interesting everyone loves the rock uh he always he wears the same outfit in every single movie so it'll be interesting to see how they dress him in this one uh but yeah not much talk about there pretty exciting as long as infinity war doesn't have anything to do with this movie i think it'll yeah, be solid let them be the yeah 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 do you would you watch this movie of course i would we're going to I opening would night to. Oh, we'd Dude, have, yeah we'd go to opening night damascus patreon hangout movie night watch the call of duty movie I wonder what the setting would be. You know? I don't know. I think it actually could be good. War movies if he's just in, are yeah. always good. They're always yeah. fun, you know? If this is just in talks, then this movie's like a year and a half away, probably. Because I was thinking, maybe they drop this with like the Infinity War title. Maybe they drop it when Warzone 2 launches. Uh, it would Black be helicopters? No, nah, it's think? way too soon, yeah. Yeah. Because they, well, they take be like a movie, year so. to film a movie and then they take another year to edit it and then they like are doing promo for it and then they release it. I think the earliest we would see this movie if they are if they haven't even finalized the deal would be like two and a half, three years. Yeah. I'm a movie I th studio. I don't think that owner, long. But. I I could see by like next summer early or something like like the earliest, but I don't think it's not going to take him three. The Rock isn't going to spend three years working on it. That's a how movie. all movies are, dude. They take forever. They it's not. It doesn't take three years. Film. Yeah, well, no, good movies. This years, is going to be filmed in a yet. jungle, and there's going to be two months of filming. Two months? Okay. That's it. Maybe. That's it. I don't know. I don't know how long these things Rock's take. Rock's going to have the same lines he has in all of his other movies. Again, they don't even have to change his outfit. Let's go kill the bad guys. Maybe they'll just take <laughs> scenes from various movies of his and put them into the movie, and then when he's not no in the scene, they can make it Call of Duty. Yeah, it's yeah, possible. True. They certainly could. True, true, true. Yeah, this would be cool. I don't know. I don't care about movies. I'll watch this, though. Uh, I'm a film expert. Yeah, I'm a big film guy. Got it. Alfred, I'm a big Hitchcock. film man. I'm a big comedian guy. Big Alfred into stand-up comedy. Yeah. What are What are your thoughts on Alfred Hitchcock's? Got it. Uh, new Bloomberg report states that <laughs> okay. the FTC, not the Justice Department, will investigate Microsoft's acquisition of Blizzard Entertainment. The FTC has been claiming they will be more aggressive in review of deals that impact the fair market. This should be interesting. Um, is this anything else? I don't. Uh, 
the person who has an authorized speak publicly to uh, yeah i don't know i don't know what this really means honestly i didn't know i i think i guess when we covered this they were saying justice department i thought the ftc was like a part of that i i i mean i don't know i'm not a in the fed that's all i know yeah yeah hey i don't know how there are a lot of little committees and organizations and bodies of the government but yeah I, this I thought the FTC was a part of the Justice Department, so when we talked about them trying to make sure this isn't a monopoly or something, we got all that right. This is just more confirmation. I guess we said the wrong three-letter whatever government agency, but it's FTC, not... It's the Fed. The Fed's all one. FJD Fed, or whatever. F-E-D. Yeah. What? Federal Trade Commission? Is that the FTC? The Fed. So anyway, it it's matter. the same shit we've been saying that, yeah, they're going to investigate and make sure this isn't a monopoly. That's why they're talking about fair market or whatever. Uh, but I don't, I don't know. This is, yeah. It'll go through. I would be shocked. Yeah, of course yeah. it will. The U.S. antitrust review of Microsoft's proposed acquisition will be handled by the FTC. Yeah, okay, cool. So, I don't know. This will go through. They'll grease the palms they need to to make this happen. Oh, uh, they'll, yeah, they'll pay off everyone, yeah. Even if they didn't, I don't think this would constitute uh, like a, a merger that is making a monopoly or an unfair market. There's so many big players. I and we talked about that, so I don't think that's very exciting. This next thing, this next thing, however, is pretty shocking. Breaking news: as of January 31st, Sony has announced that they will be acquiring Bungie, the development studio that originally, oh, excuse me, made Halo for 3.6 billion dollars. Quote, we've had a strong partnership with Bungie since the inception of the Destiny franchise, and I couldn't be more thrilled to officially welcome the studio to the PlayStation family, said Sony president and CEO Jim Ryan. Fake name. Uh, this is weird. Dog shit name. So like oh my, Bungie Jim used to be Ryan. a Microsoft studio, and now they are owned by Sony, which is a PlayStation, the PlayStation people. But then Microsoft is buying Activision. It's all weird. It's very weird. Do you think it the is. timing is a coincidence, or do you think that was like on purpose or something? Black helicopters. I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, um. I did hear there's supposedly a lot of other big acquisitions coming up in the gaming industry. Really? I don't know if it's people are seeing like how much money these companies are making from video games and they're trying to get more invested in it. I don't really, I don't know. Maybe they're all just going to start pushing the NFT bullshit or something. And they, they think what they can make a bunch of money on that for NFTs in your free to play battle Royale. That's let's get that funnel going, man. Yeah. Let's get that thing coming. A little call um, of duty NFT. We just yeah. I NFT. just hope, Listen, all that matters is somebody out there needs to buy electronic arts just to bankrupt them and put them out of business because they are actual scam artists, the worst company, the worst video game company in the world, without a doubt. Uh, just a scummy fucking rat pieces of shit. Wait, if you guys think Activision is bad, EA is way worse, way worse. Their games are all pay to win. So fuck EA, someone buy them and just close them down. I hope Activision, I hope Microsoft does that next. They say, hey, EA, we're going to buy you. They get all excited, cut their severance packages, fire them all day one, see a company's close, pussies. That's what we should do. Got it. One thing I don't um, like about this trend, and I kind of hope it doesn't continue, is what this looks like is there are tr these publishers are trying to get more i think they call it vertical integration or vertical something where they own every part of like the supply chain it's like amazon did this like amazon had amazon prime and a bunch of people were getting shit shipped to them and then amazon was like we want to do one day delivery and then every delivery company on earth was like, guys, we can't do it or whatever. So like Amazon was like, okay, well, we're just going to have our own delivery thing now also so that we can meet the demands. So instead of hiring a delivery person, we're just going to make a company that delivers shit and do it ourselves. Now, obviously Amazon still uses UPS and shit, I think, but still it's like not much, but they, yeah, they still do. Yeah, exactly. It's like, but if if we want something done, 
it's easiest if we are in charge of that facet. So we'll just make the company ourselves. Mm. I think it's called like vertical integration or something. I don't know. But Borpa business. Borpa business. But this is kind of like when Sony Sony is a publisher, they're more than that. PlayStation's a publisher. But they're buying a development studio. And if you're going to make a game and you and one company owns both the publisher and the dev studio, it's going to make it a lot easier to implement whatever whatever dog shit microtransaction scam horseshit you want to than to have to like convince a dev team that you're the good guy before they agree to make your game for you. Why do that? Why not just make your own goddamn dev studio or just buy one so that you can make them do whatever the fuck you want without any negotiation or pushback or anything of the kind? Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that I'm kind of worried by because I don't want publishers developing games. I want developers developing games. And you might be saying, well, this isn't PlayStation making a dev company. They're buying one. Same shit. If they own the company, then they own the company and all the decisions that come out of it. So Bungie will no yeah. longer be Bungie as you know it. It will be Sony that has a different company name for their own development studio. But this could be bad news in the long run, especially if this continues to be a trend uh, going forward. But I think any development studio that is owned by a publisher will be a less good and have less integrity in general than a development studio that is just a development studio and is not owned by a publishing company. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll see how this plays out, but uh, I don't care about Sony buying Bungie in and of no. itself. I don't give a shit, but oh. if this trend continues and Activision just buys Infinity Ward and Treyarch and Sledgehammer and Raven and Beanox and Demonware and whatever the fuck, then, you know, oops. So we'll see. But other than that, boys and girls, that is it. We are done. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Reminder, couple reminders. The Patreon overhaul is complete. We are offering more bonus content than ever now. If you want to see the details on each and every tier available, how many bonus episodes and other goodies you get, including monthly hangouts, store discounts, and more, Go to the uh, patreon.com slash the drop shot. You can also go to the drop shot.com. You can find our YouTube channel there. You can find our Patreon. You can find our PO box. Please send us things. You can find a link to our PO box or the address, whatever on uh, our website as well. The drop uh, And also join the discord. The discord is linked in the show notes in the video description, or once again on the drop Therein you will find the rules and signups for the drop shot invitational number four caldera Warzone trios tournament it's going to be both fun and exciting signups are now open there is a deadline please sign up and we are still looking for four sponsors to fill out that 500 united states dollar prize pool for the drop shot invitational number four Patreon.com yeah. slash the drop shot, as always, is the best way to support the show. There's never been a, a better time to sign up. Figure it the fuck out. Boys and girls, thank you all for listening. Thank you for watching. Have an excellent evening, of course. And as always, remember, stay humble. Stay humble.